If your right hand causes you to sin, or if your right eye or your foot cut it off and cast it from you. What does this mean? This seems to be a very simple parable, uh, very direct, very easy to understand. But over the years, I've actually heard different interpretations um, to this parable. Some, I would say, are innocent, uh, but other interpretations are actually quite dangerous. So I'm going to teach on this passage, and with God's help, I'll uh, explain it in a way that is easy to understand to the best of my abilities. Let's go to the passages where it is mentioned, and I'm going to start out by reading first, first from King James Version, since I know that one of the arguments uh, is the definition of the word. The word uh, causes to sin versus the word offend. Okay, so let's get started. Matthew chapter 5 verse 29 says, And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members shall perish, and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of your members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Uh, second testimony is in Matthew 18, verse 8 says, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot, in this case it doesn't say right hand or right eye, it just says hand, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes and be cast into hell fire. And last testimony is in Mark. Mark chapter 9 verse 43 says, And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched, uh, wh where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off, it is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall, shall never be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy eye offend thee, pluck it out, it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes, and be cast into hell fire where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Now to begin, I want to mention that there's four things uh, that we have to define in these passages in order to properly understand uh, what the message is. Because one of the most successful ways that the enemy has to deceive us is uh, in scripture is changing around the definition of the words. It's, it's a classic strategy. The first definition is the conclusion. We have to define what is the ultimate punishment that Jesus warns us about. Number two is what does offend thee mean in this passage. Uh, number three is what does hand, eye, and foot mean? What does these members mean? And number four, what does it mean to cut it off exactly? Okay, so the first thing that we must define is the conclusion to start off. Um, in all three passages, passages that we read in, um, in Matthew and in Mark, the Lord Jesus ends with the same conclusion to, to not heed into his words. And he clearly speaks by saying that you will go to hell if you don't follow this advice given in these passages. Okay, so the conclusion of going to hell is by no means symbolical, uh, allegorical, poetic, it's by any means. It is actually literal. So by simple logic, we conclude that the punishment is severe and it's for believers and unbelievers alike. Um, it's for all people who don't follow the advice that he gives. Okay, so that's the first definition. Let's move on. Uh, what does it mean to offend thee? Uh, well, in Mark, if we go back uh, one verse, we get a glimpse to help us understand what um, offend means and the severity in this passage. In Mark 9, verse 42 it says, and whoever shall offend one of these little ones that believes in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hang about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Likewise, in Matthew 18, if you go back a couple of verses before and verse uh, six, it says, but whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were, it, it were better for him that a millstone were hang around his neck and that he would, drown, he would drown in the depth of the sea. The word offend used in the context of someone offending a little one is actually the same one used in your hand or your eye offending you. That word is scandalizo, which means to induce to sin. It is the same exact word. The only difference 
is that one is one use of the word scandalizo is to offend and when it's referring to someone offending someone while the other one is something that offends you but just by looking at the definition and the context and the severity of the punishment um, one being thrown in the ocean and drowned and the other one going to hell um, we conclude that it is referring to someone or something that causes you to sin or causing a child, a little one that believes in God, God to sin. Uh, so offend means to cause someone to sin, uh, to, be, to be induced to sin, guided to sin, tempted to sin. Uh, that's what offend means within the passage. Okay, I think it's clear. Let's move on. Okay, so now, now that we have defined what it means to offend, uh, to which is cause to sin. Now we have to define what it, what it means, the hand, the eye, and the foot. What, what do these things mean within these passages uh, and their proper, in, within their proper context? In Matthew 5, the, the right hand and the right eye is mentioned. So one could actually draw very, uh, very inaccurate definitions by focusing solely on the word right. Um, because, you know, if you, if you look at the same passage mentioned in Matthew 18, and Mark 9, uh, when referring to, you know, the same parable, it doesn't mention at all the word right. Okay, it doesn't say right hand, it doesn't say right eye. It only says hand and, and eye. And, and in Mark, it even adds the word foot. So a very naive way of breaking down this parable is to try to find the definition uh, individually of, of the word right hand or eye or foot, uh, making a, a separate distinction in these body parts well, that just, to me, that just demonstrates a lack of discernment uh, with the goal, ultimately, ultimately, of uh, deviating from the, from the real message and, and the warning uh, about the, the, the gravity of, of sin. So what did the Lord Jesus want to convey by mentioning hand, eye, and, and foot? Do you, do you really think we have to go into the Greek to see what he means by eye, what he means by hand, foot, in order to, to understand what he really meant? Uh, no, brothers and sisters, not at all. All we have to do is read within the context and compare scripture to scripture and just let the word of God define itself. The hand represents a member that causes you to sin. The eye represents a member that causes you to sin as well. And the foot, well, surprise, is also a member that tempts you, causes you to sin. Now, what those members mean in your life? Now, that's a real question. The Lord Jesus liked speaking about the same topic uh, many times in, in many different ways, uh, using different analogies. For example, when he spoke about the kingdom of God. If you go to Matthew 13, starting from verse 24, it says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Um, then verse 31 says, Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like the mustard seed, which is a man took and sowed in his field. Another parable he spoke in verse 33 the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid, and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leavened. Verse 44 says again, the kingdom of heaven is like the treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. And verse 47, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind. Okay, so I think uh, the point is quite clear that I'm, I'm trying to make here. Um, what I'm trying to say is that God used the examples of these vital organs, these body parts, these members, in order to teach us something important. Um, as if we were, as if we were children. The member, whether it's is your eye, uh, that member, whether it's your hand or whether it's your foot, it's it's the instrument that is used to tempt you, to cause you to sin. Now there are two uh, categories of these members or instruments. The, um, I broke it down that way, and the first category is in the context of the body of Christ, which is the church or, or, congr or your congregation. Um, and the second one is in the category of your body, your life, you as an individual. So let's talk about the first category, which is member of uh, the body of Christ, member of the church, member of congregation. Um, let's go to an example, which is in 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Uh, verse 1 says, It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife, and you are puffed up. I have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from you. And then verse 13 says, Therefore put away from yourself the evil person. In other words, throw out 
that member of the church because the church is a body of Christ and the church is made up of people. And a perverse person has to be cut off according to what, what Paul is clearly saying here because if um, that perverse person is not cut off, then, then maybe the whole, the whole body you know, will be contaminated and it will be in danger of completely being cut off, all of them. So the first category of member has to do with a person in a congregation that has to be cut off. Um, but what, what I would mostly like to focus on really is the second category, which is in reference to uh, individual, you as an individual, which in your life, it will be your body as opposed to the body of Christ, the church. So let's focus on that and, and then focusing again, what is the hand, the foot, the eye? What does that mean to you as an individual? Let's go back to Matthew chapter 5, uh, where we were reading originally, but let's go back a verse, uh, Matthew 5, verse 27 says, You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Now, I would like to give you a warning that if anyone disconnects or minimizes the connection of verse 28 from um, referring to adultery from the verse 29, which concludes with hellfire. Anyone who thinks that or even worse teaches that is, is very ignorant or might straight up be a child of the devil because, because the fruit of that disconnection is to minimize the severity of sin. It's plain, plain and simple. Okay, so I'm going to try to explain this passage uh, about adultery and uh, its significance to plucking out your eye, uh, cutting off your hand. Uh, let us plainly look at the example that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us himself. Okay, he talks about a woman. He talks about a woman that you look at and then you are enticed to lust after her. And because uh, of the temptation, you know, you commit adultery in your heart. So in this case, she was the instrument used to tempt you uh, towards sinning. This is completely connected to verse 29. For example, if a girl in your school or uh, in college or a mutual friend or even an, an ex-girlfriend or an actual girlfriend or a girl on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, who's provoking you to lust after her in your heart, well, that girl would be that instrument that you look at. Um, that entices you to sin and commit adultery, that will be the instrument, that will be the person, that will be the object that you have to cut off from your life, okay? It's because it's more profitable to cut her off than to burn for all eternity. Simple. So when referring to the category of yourself as an individual, meaning your life, your body, your soul, your, your hand, your eye, your foot, we have to understand that, that the member, whatever it is, is the instrument, is the object, is the person that the devil uses to tempt you repeatedly. And what God is suggesting is that the member that the devil is using to tempt you will remove it from your life. So that, that object, that instrument, that person cannot be used as a weapon against you. It is better to eliminate it. Now, I would like to take the time to focus a moment on the types of instruments that have the capacity to cause us to fall into sin. And I'm going to divide it into two categories, okay? Very simple. One is things, and the other one is people, okay? Uh, an instrument in the category of things could be, for example, the computer. It could be the internet. It could be your cell phone. It could be social media. It could be Facebook. It could be Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever. Or, or you know, it could even be a place that you used to go when you were in the world. Like, for example, um, if you like going downtown, um, and, if you're, and if you're suffering, of, you know, with you're battling with lust, then you shouldn't be going downtown at night because you know what you're going to find there. Or for example, if you, if you smoke weed and definitely don't go to downtown Orlando at night because it smells like weed all over the place. So depart yourself from the thing, the object, the application, the, the social media, the place, whatever that entices you to sin, especially if there is a door of weakness in your life. I hope that is very clear for all the listeners. And uh, my question for you would be, what is that item? What is that place? What, what is it that tempts you, that causes you to fall? What is it? You have to define it yourself. Um, have you fallen into pornography? What were you looking at in Facebook? Did images just you know, magically pop up on your screen that provoked you? Well, what happened? Okay, 
All right, brother. Well, my, my advice would be, uh, you know, quite simple. Just delete your Facebook if that's what happened. It's better to cut it off than for you to go to hell. If lust is your problem and social media entice you to sin, then we can safely say that your hand, in that case, will be Facebook. Your eye is Instagram. Your, your foot is TikTok. You know, it's just examples of members that cause you to sin, so cut them off. Whatever those instruments have been that, that cause you to stumble, just cut it from you. You have to cut it, just like, for example, Joseph, he uh, cut the wife of Potiphar. He ran. He literally uh, fleed. He didn't look back. He didn't just ignore. No, no, he ran. So you also have to not just ignore and pretend you're strong. You have to flee from it. So dear brothers and dear sisters, I think I'm making myself very clear. Um, an instrument that causes you to fall must be cut off from your life, whatever that thing may be. It can also be a person. So the same thing applies to a person. A person could be also an instrument in Satan to entice you to sin. It could be a girlfriend or it could be a gossiping friend. The same rule uh, would apply to, to a person that entices you to, to stumble and to sin. If they are being used as an instrument of the enemy to tempt you, then they are that member, they are that hand, that eye, that foot in your life that you would have to cut off. All right, brothers and sisters, uh, we're getting close to the end. Uh, you know, we already answered what it means to be offended. It, it means to cause to sin. We answer also what the hand, the eye, and foot represent in your life. Um, and now let us define in detail, lastly, what cutting off actually means. Cutting off your hand, cutting off your foot, plucking out your eye, in the context in which the Lord Jesus was explaining it, it means literally to remove yourself, uh, remove from your life anything that places you in the position where you could be tempted to sin. And at this time, I'm going to give you some examples of actual advice I've given young men and women who were stumbling and falling into sin or were just born again and needed uh, a fair warning as they started. Some examples of literal advice I've given of cutting off members is eliminate your Facebook. Because you have been using Facebook to have illicit conversations with women, cut it off from your life completely. It is better to delete your Facebook account than for you to go to hell completely. Erase your Instagram account. The attention you were receiving from followers has caused you to act provocatively. Cut off your lesbian friends, they will make you doubt of your deliverance. Cut off your drunk friends, they will eventually drag you back into the world, into parties, and to seeking women. Dump your boyfriend, dump your girlfriend, they provoke you to fornicate. Leave the gym because now you do it to get women's attention. Throw away your tight clothing because you're provoking the, weak, the weaker brothers. Don't listen to that worldly music anymore because it, it contaminates you. Don't be talking on the phone every day because you end up gossiping. These are just some simple and real, actual, real uh, examples of advice uh, I've given brothers and sisters, and I have, you know, I have many more. So hopefully, it's abundantly clear uh, what cutting off actually means when it comes to your life. Uh, what it means to cut off, think, cut things off, or cut people off when ties you uh, to stumble and to fall into sin. Okay, because if we don't cut them off, then they will continue to be instruments that the devil will be using repeatedly to tempt you with the end goal of, of what? Well, of sending you to hell. While I was meditating on this scripture, um, I realized something that this, um, this is a literal representation, brothers, and it's a preparation for the day of judgment. What I mean by that is that the language that the Lord Jesus uses in this parable of cutting off your hand um, is the same language that he's gonna be using um, as many are making their appeal when they're sentenced on the day of judgment. Let me explain. So when someone is condemned on Judgment Day, they will most likely say something that sounds like this. But Lord, it was my hand that caused me to sin. But Lord, it was my eye that caused me to sin. It was my foot that tempted me and caused me to stumble. But I didn't want to do it, Lord. You know, it was my foot. Now, does this remind you of something that started in the beginning? Well, if you go to the Garden of Eden, when Adam was being sentenced, and he said, but Lord, the woman that you gave me, she, she made me fall. And then the, what did the woman say? And then, Lord, the serpent deceived me and caused me to fall. And what did the Lord say? Um, dear brothers and sisters, there was no excuse in God's first sentencing in the Garden of Eden. And there's going to be no excuse on the Day of Judgment. If someone comes up and tries to appeal by using these excuses, God is going to simply say, just like he's, he mentioned, if your right hand caused you to sin, 
why didn't you cut it off from you? And if your eye caused you to sin, why didn't you pluck it and remove it from you? Wouldn't it have been more profitable to eliminate that member that was causing you to fall, that was tempting you to sin, than your entire body, your entire soul to be lost forever? Whatever the hand or eye or the foot represents in your life, um, in your personal life, God is giving us a very clear and severe warning through this parable in order to prepare us for, for that day, the day that He's going to judge everyone, so that there is going to be no excuse. And the warning, I, it looks to be very severe, that, and He was wise enough to give us a very dramatic, very severe example of, of cutting off body parts, because this has eternal consequences, and if you don't become like a child in order to, you know, in order to understand this, this very simple logic, then you may come to interpret it in a different way. You may come to interpret it uh, like, like, for example, oh, well, the right hand means, you know, means power, means a place of authority. Therefore, God is saying, you know, don't boast, don't, don't, don't put yourself in an authoritative position in the church. You know, don't be a leader in the church. Some may interpret it that way. And then the eye that, you know, the eye means like the plank in the eye it means hypocrisy, judging others. And the foot means, you know, running to do evil. So brothers and sisters, please, you know, this is very clear. Let's not make up false doctrine here. And, um, and I, but I can imagine uh, many false teachers, you know, they, they will continue teaching against what, what I'm saying here and against what the scripture clearly uh, is, is trying to convey. And they criticize us, you know, they have and they will continue to criticize us saying, oh no, you only focus on adultery, you, fo you focus on fornication, you focus on sinning too much. And, uh, you know, you boast that you don't, you know, you're, you're too holy and you're more holy than anybody else. You know, these have been literal accusations brought against us, and, and, and I'm going to say it, brothers, and, and I'm going to continue saying it forever, that anybody who gives a message of any kind that diminishes or minimizes sin by teaching that it is not important, that person is not of God. Matthew 5, 19 says, Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so, uh, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And uh, then Matthew um, 18, verse 6, again says, But whoever causes one of these little ones to believe, that believes in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he would be drowned in the depth of the sea. Because God, all the way from Genesis until Revelation, has always required a holy people, a holy church, a people who hate sin, who separate themselves from sin, who protect themselves from being tempted and don't play around um, with anything that would entice them uh, to tempt them to sin. God requires men and women who are willing to cut off their hand, willing to cut off uh, their boyfriend, their girlfriend, their social media, those, you know, those video games, that, that weed, whatever, that person, that object, that member that causes you to sin. He is looking for an individual who is willing to deny themselves, deny the desires, and follow Him. Okay, so to finish off, I would like to say that whoever, whoever has the desire to sin is still a slave to sin. Therefore, the best option would actually be to not desire to do it, to not desire to commit adultery, to not desire to commit fornication, to not desire to lie, to get drunk, to smoke weed, to gossip, to do all those things, etc. That would be the goal and the best, you know, the best possible scenario. But uh, then why did Jesus say this, you know, and, and leave it for his children to meditate on? Because at the, at the bare minimum, Jesus has told us that the first step to showing fruit of repentance is to cut it off and to not wait uh, or make excuses that, you know, you still haven't 100% lost the desire to commit that sin. I know that it's written that God does transform the heart and removes the desire to sin. But at the very least, even if you still struggle with the desire to sin, it, it, it's, it's to show restraint and cut from your life the things that entice you to sin, and in doing so, uh, showing fruit, real fruit of repentance, which is, which is action taken to show God that you are, you are serious. So dear brothers and sisters, if your right hand or your left hand or your, your right eye, your foot, whatever member it is, causes you to sin, cut it from you, cut it off. It is, it is really quite simple and it can only be understood by those who have a pure heart and those who are being called to repent, are seeking repentance, are seeking forgiveness, are seeking to stay holy for God. It is not meant for those, uh, to, it's not meant to be understood by those who simply confess Jesus 
as their Lord and Savior and are okay with continuing to sin and living in sin because they're already saved. It, it's not meant for those people. I'm sorry, it's, it's not, okay? It's not meant for them. It, it's meant for those who, are, who truly are seeking to repent, be forgiven, and live holy for God, okay? So, so cut off from your life whatever is provoking you to sin because that which makes you sin is, is your right hand. That which makes you sin is your eye, is your foot that has to be cut off because it's better to cast it from you than to retain it, and, and with that being retained, to be sent into hell, separated from God for all eternity. It's not worth it. God bless you.